Hi, welcome to Midfit. In this video, we will talk about proteins, specifically the difference between veg and non-veg protein source foods. So, is it like your dal, pulses, soya bean? Are they really a good source of protein? Or your eggs, chicken, fish are the only protein source foods you can have. So, we will see the differences between these two and how to identify which is the best protein source food that you can have depending upon your fitness goal and lifestyle. So, let's get started. Now, protein itself means that it is of prime importance. It is very important to consume. So, it is of prime importance. It is one of the macronutrients. Other are your carbohydrates and fats. Protein is also the most misunderstood and neglected in diet, especially in Indian meals. There is complete lack of protein. Even non-vegetarian they who consume once in a while a chicken, fish, they are also protein intake is very less. And also it is very misunderstood. It is very important to consume protein in your fat loss and muscle gain diet. If you are on a fat loss diet, it is important that you increase the protein intake. Also, if you are on a muscle gain diet, you will have to increase your protein intake to achieve your fitness goals. So next we will see the functions of protein and a bit of a science on how to identify the best class of protein source foods for you. So now let's see what are the functions of protein, body structure. Proteins are the building blocks of the body. Every basic cell structure in the body is made up of protein. That is your hair, skin, bone, everything is made up of protein. It is used for growth and repair. Your body undergoes a lot of stress daily. Your muscle breaks down and protein is required for it to repair the damaged muscle, body tissue and also for recovery purposes. So for exercising individual, also it becomes very compulsory to increase their protein intake. Also for sedentary person, it is compulsory that you consume enough quantities of protein. It is used for muscle contraction. Uh, protein can help build immunity. It has certain properties in it that can build your immunity. It controls body functions. All your hormones except your sex hormones are made up of protein. Your thyroid hormone, your insulin hormone, your growth hormone, everything is made up of protein. So it is very important to consume protein in your diet. Now this is a very important concept to understand. If you get this, you can make a proper choice of protein source foods. Now protein is made of chain of amino acid. That is they are placed one after the other. Now there are in total 20 different amino acid. Each amino acid is different and a food is called a complete protein food only when these 20 different amino acids are present in that particular food. Say for example eggs. Eggs are the most high quality protein source food that you can find. So they also if any one amino acid is missing it cannot be called as a protein source food example say the word english even if one letter n is missing the word is not complete uh, same goes with any protein source food e even if one amino acid is missing it cannot be called as a complete protein now these 20 are divided into the following nine essential amino acids as the way word says essential you need to compulsory consume from your diet your body cannot make these nine essential amino acids and hence it becomes compulsory to consume from the diet for protein synthesis then comes your nine non-essential amino acids these are non-essential the body can make in enough quantity but and it is not compulsory for you to consume from the diet but for an exercising individual who is looking for optimization of performance and growth it is compulsory to include these nine non-essential amino acids as well i am not going through the names of the amino acids and that will be uh, too much technical and it's not required for the video now comes the two conditionally essential amino acids that is glutamine and arginine your body can make in enough quantity at, and it is not compulsory to consume from the diet but again if you are working out and if you are an exercising individual you should consume it from the diet for a greater recovery and repair and growth let's come to the final part of the video 
let's see the difference between first class protein and second class protein the reason i have not divided between veg protein and non veg protein source food is because someone who eats eggs also they call themselves as vegetarian so there are a lot of different types of vegetarian in india and hence i have divided this bit in between first class protein and second class protein so in first class protein you have all the nine essential amino acids uh, in required quantity in second class one or more essential amino acids are missing as we learned before that we need nine essential amino acids in a particular food group to call it to call itself as a protein source so hence it, the first class proteins are called as complete protein the second class protein is called incomplete protein because it, uh, it cannot repair it if one or more essential amino acid is missing now the first class proteins can repair muscle completely so after workouts you, your muscles get damaged so consuming this it will repair your muscles completely second class proteins cannot repair muscles completely so let's see what are the examples of first class protein and second class protein so in first class proteins you have your eggs ande your chicken fish paneer paneer and milk and milk products now in supplements the first class protein are your whey and casein in second class protein let's see uh, what are the examples so you have your dal pulses uh, tur chana masoor dal all your legumes rajma chana chole so these are all your second class proteins nuts almonds peanuts walnuts so all these proteins all these food sources have one or more essential amino acid missing and hence they cannot be called as complete protein now soya bean this is a big one now soya bean lacks an essential amino acid called as methionine it lacks amino acid this and it cannot be called as a complete protein as it lacks in methionine and there are a lot of other anti nutrients properties present in soya that it makes a problem consuming it so i'll make another video of uh, is soya good or bad for you now someone will say that i'll combine two vegetarian food sources and make it a complete protein example like famous rice and beans now rice will give you the missing uh, methionine and beans will give you the missing lysine in rice so these are the two essential amino acids and hence it will make it a complete protein but you can do that but you will get a very uh, small amount of uh, protein from that and uh, also it will not be enough if you are an exercising individual the protein synthesis will be very less the recovery will get affected you will not be able to uh, build muscle tissues and uh, hence it would not be a great choice if you combine a uh, uh, dal and rice to get your protein requirement so that is the video for today hope you learned something about first class protein and second class protein and how to differentiate between them and how to make a proper choice depending upon your fitness goals and lifestyle so if you have liked this video please give it a thumbs up share it with others and do subscribe to my channel midfit for more evidence based videos on fitness health and nutrition thank you